Deciding who you're willing to talk to is a big one for me. Now, most people in this world are reactive. They're not conscious. They're, they don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> they just react to life, and they love to talk about what's wrong. You know, who did what to whom and how bad it is and that sort of thing. And I decided years ago, I, just, I have no room for them. I have no space for them. You know, if they are in need, if they've hurt themselves or they need help, I'm glad to help, whatever. But to have conversation of that type is not compatible with my mind. It's simply not compatible. And that means you change your friends. When you first make that decision, you, you, a lot of your friends change, you know. Uh, I've been fortunate to be an engineer in my life, and most engineers like to talk about technical things. So, we, you know, it's, it's easy to shift the conversation into something technical. And then they're not talking about how bad it is or whatever. Uh, so that's been kind of a gift. But I just have no room for people who do not choose to live consciously. Now, I used to struggle with that a lot. Uh, and then I noticed a verse in the Bible where a woman came to Jesus for a healing, and he says, woman, I didn't come for you. I came for the, um, what were they called? I came for the children of Israel or something like that, which in the Bible means the seekers those who are looking for truth, right? So here was Jesus saying, I'm not going to talk to you. And it took me a while. Could that possibly be true? Would he say that? And then I was reading a book about another Eastern master who had people who wanted to be his disciples, and he would chase them away. And Ram Dass's guru chased away people. He said, no, you don't belong here. Go away. You don't want to hear what I have to say. And one group came to him and said, uh, you're not telling us anything. We've been sitting here for three days and you don't talk to us. <clears throat> and he said, well, where are you going when you leave here? Well, I got to go back to work and close up the office. Well, then what are you going to do? Well, I got to do this and do that and do that. He said, you have no room for me. You know, I'd be wasting my breath. You have no room for me. We want to be with people who are seeking what we are seeking. We want to be with people who have said, you know, I'm not willing to take another 10, 20, 30, 40 lifetimes to get where I want to go. I'm going to use every moment of this lifetime to get where I want to go. I want this to be my last mandatory life on earth. If I come back again, it's going to be as an awakened master. I'll just be here to show people how to heal or whatever, okay? But I, I just have no time for that. So I personally, you know, don't stand around and talk with people who want to talk about who did what to whom. They have no room for that. Another verse in the Bible that puzzled me with what you're saying as far as sometimes your friends have to drop off. Well, he also, could, you know, he says you can't preach to your own village. Right. And that's, you know, you are with family that you have no control of, like, letting them go. Mm -hmm. So... How do you incorporate that mindset into having to spend time with people because they're your family who haven't got that, that lifestyle, that knowledge? Or if it's your family, you know you chose them. Okay, so there was a reason that you chose them. So look at your relationship. <clears throat> was the reason because for the first two years of their life, I was to take care of them or something like that. The two years is gone. My obligation is finished. You know, we can't let other people say, this is the right thing to do and let that control our life. We follow our guidance. Our guidance may say that's the right thing to do or our guidance may say, actually, you need to move over here, right? Something like that. It's, it's family Family and intimate relationships are the biggest, strongest teaching methods on the planet. That's the ultimate, that's the quintessential lesson. If you can be who you are and be around family or free yourself from family, you've made a giant step.
giant leap, okay? Have to be true to yourself. Can't alter who you are because you're in the presence of somebody else, right? So I must be true to myself. Is that helpful? I mean, it's, you know, the, the biggest lessons are the ones we say, yeah, but how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? Um, and the answer is, you don't. You can't. You must let spirit do it for you. You know, because you're telling yourself right off the bat, I don't know how to do this. So you get the intent to be clear, to clear yourself of unwanted relationships, of, un, of relationships that aren't healing, that aren't helpful, right? and watch spirit give you opportunities to gently, spirit's ways are always gentle, well, unless you have said, I'm impatient, spirit, I want to do this immediately, spirit will say, okay, this will hurt a little bit, but okay. Uh, but generally, we can find a gentle way out of every unpleasant situation. First thing is to know you can be free. I can be free. I do not have to be the victim of my family, of my friends, of, you know, my boss, my co-workers, or anything. I can be free. Yeah. Does that help any? Yes. So me and my husband and my sisters and some of my friends um, tell each other cancel clear when we say something that's really not beneficial for us or, you know, the person can keep going if they want, but most people are like, let me think about that. Yeah, I really need to go. But we just gently remind each other that maybe that's not where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a reason for being unhappy. We we kind of make a game out of this, but we go into stores, and most people working in large stores, grocery stores or Walmart or whatever, aren't happy. That's not their bliss. They don't want to be there. They need a little money, so they're working. Okay, and it's really interesting if you just think as you approach the cash register, and here's this grumpy person up there. Just say. Tell me what I say to that person as you get up there. And again, weird things may come out of your mouth, you know, like me at the toll booth on the Pennsylvania Turnpike <laughs> saying your wife's going to be okay. We were listening to a, a story on uh, TV of a, a fellow who the uh, cashier was having trouble cash register wasn't working right, the line was backing up, people were yelling and complaining and everything. And when he got up there to the register, you know, he asked just the right question. I don't remember what the question was, but he asked just the right question. And she said, my baby is sick in the hospital. You know, I don't know if she's going to make it and I have to be here working. And, you know, obvious reasons for being unhappy. And by the time he left the register, this lady had said, my sister's a nurse. I'm going to call her right now and get her to come and see your kid. This one had said, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. I can do another for you. So the grumpy, typical, reactive checkout line turned into a healing zone, you know. And we can, we can often do that. And sometimes it's just... You know, there was a grumpy lady at Walmart where I was the other day, and, and I said, gosh, have you been here since 4 o'clock? I've been here since 7, and I get off in two hours. And I said, great, you know. And then we had a nice little conversation. But just the right thing to say to somebody. Now, they may not be living consciously, but they can still be cheered up. You know, they can still go through a shift. So everybody's in need of help. If you're on this planet, you're in need of help. <laughs> and you can come up with just the right word at the right time for the right person. Yes? Um, you know, I know you're intuitive about yourself and your life of what you do. Are you intuitive? Like, do you help other people? I don't know, say like readings and stuff. Do you do that for people as well? Like, can you project it with them? Do readings for people? Yeah. 
Uh, I used to do that for a living, actually. Uh, there was a period of time I did that. That was my, my income, I do that. I, I only do that in workshops now. So are you wanting to be the guinea pig? <laughs> uh, yeah. And when you say you're intuitive, you know, the hardest person for most people to be intuitive about is yourself. I can reach you and you and you and you and you, but I got a problem and I don't know what to do about it, you know. So we exchange. So Ann and I are always reading for each other, always coming up with a, it's not that hard. Here's the simple answer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing for, uh, for each other. And as I mentioned, she has a, a phone group of, of people that when we're just sitting around, if they happen to come to our house, most of them are in different parts of the country, but if they show up, you know, they're just ordinary people. But I watch if one of them has a problem, that one turns into a genius healer. It's like a trigger mechanism. You may think you're an ordinary, bogged down person, but when one of those in your support group says, I'm just really stuck on this, you take a breath and out comes all this wisdom. I've watched wisdom pour out of her friends that were just amazing. And then you start talking about normal stuff and they're, ah, they're a mess. <laughs> but, you know, we can do that for each other. We all are good readers. And there are just, we just need to know that there are times I can't read for myself, but I can read for others. Okay. So that's, that's a good deal. Actually, I think we'll do two different things here. I'll be glad to read everybody later if you want to do that. Uh, and, and can read for, we all can read. But let's start reading for each other. We, we want to practice knowing the right thing at the right time for the right person. Okay. So the way I do that in workshops is how many people do we have? Four, eight. Okay. Let's get in groups of three or four. We're going to pick up our chairs and we can move around where you can't hear other people and stuff like that. And here's the way we want to do it. Okay. Ego loves to take over and dominate. And No, I won't tell that story. Um, <clears throat> ego loves to, to jump right in, okay? We want to be intuitive. So what we're going to do is sit in groups of three or four people uh, together in a little circle or triangle or something. Um, and one person will be the victim, I mean the uh, person being read first. And the others will take turns and just say a phrase. Okay, now you want to not think about it. You might need to force yourself not to think about it by until it's your turn to speak, be thinking about the trees or your flower or something. And then when it's your turn, open your mouth and let something come out. Don't analyze it. Don't say, I can't do this. You can say that, but you can do it. I've had people come up to me and say, I don't visualize. I can't do visual meditations. And I said, tell me what your living room looks like. Every one of them could tell me what their living room looked like. So everybody visualizes. You can't tell me what your living room looks like unless you can see it in your head. Right? Everybody visualizes. It's just most people believe they can't. But, yeah, but it's different when you're visualizing about somebody else's living room that you have never seen. Yeah. So you have to, to trust. Well, I just made that up because I like red, so I thought it was a red chair. You know, oh, just forget about all that. Just talk. Just say, okay? So we're going to sit and look at each other, and I suggest starting by shut up, sit down, you know, take a deep breath, get centered, balanced, and then open your eyes, and whoever's going to be first, I'm going to say something to you, and they just say it whatever it is, you know. You've always had a great desire for intellectual conquest, okay? And intellectual conquest was fun for a while, but never brought you the satisfaction, the feeling of being home that you wanted, okay? So you just say it. 
I don't know her. I don't know if she can read a book, but you know, I see her writing. I guess she's educated, <laughs> you know. So you just say what you what comes to you uh, there. Now the next step is the tough one: is don't turn it into a conversation. Now what I mean by that is, or well, my sister had the same desire, and you know, don't let it run on and on and on. It shouldn't go too far, okay? And then the next person do it. And you'll discover that you picked up some real gems that were very, very helpful. Your intent is to say something to help the other person through their life, or maybe help them solve an immediate problem, or whatever. They're not going to tell you what the problem is. Not going to say, I need help with this. By saying that, they're saying, I believe I have a problem. We don't want them to believe they have a problem. We want them to believe there are no problems. So I'm going to sit here and pretend I have no problems while you say something enlightening to me. Okay? So we'll do that. Um, I don't know if any of you came together, but if you know somebody too well, don't get in their group at first. Because then there's a tendency to say, I know what you need. <laughs> you know, we don't want to be doing that. We want to just somebody that's a blank slate. So we'll do that. Uh, three or four to a group, and the whole process, if unless we get off in conversation, it shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes, okay? And then shift, create another group, get in another group with people that you don't know, and do, and do the whole process uh, a second time, okay? And we'll just see how that goes, okay? Let's do one more guided meditation. In this meditation, we'll take a look at the future. We'll look at the future from two different standpoints. One will be your personal future, what you experience. And the other will be what you want to make of it. It can be the future of the world, the future of your community, the future of whatever you desire, something that's broader than your, just your personal self. Okay? So in this meditation, we're going to go into a movie theater, and we're going to watch a movie. And that movie will take place in the future. Okay? All right. So let's... Take a deep breath. Locate your flower. Remind yourself of your inner senses, the sense of sight, color and texture of your flower. The sense of feel with your thumb and forefinger. Just feel one of the petals. It won't harm it. Just feel how soft it is. Your inner sense of smell. Smell the fragrance of your flower. Your inner sense of knowing Feel the life in the flower. Know the purpose of the flower. Now keep your flower with you while we go to the movie theater. Imagine that you are standing in front of a movie theater. It's a theater of your creation. So look at the outside of the theater and see what it looks like. Look at the doors. Create it any way you would like for it to be. There's a beautiful, elegant-looking doorman. 
inviting you to come inside. Walk into your theater, into the lobby. Create the lobby any way you would like for it to be. Put any symbols in it that you would like to see in it. Sacred objects if you would like. Who is walking around in the lobby? There is your guide. Perhaps angelic beings, perhaps master teachers. It's your creation, any way you would like for it to be. To get into the theater where we can view the screen, we must go down 10 steps. On each descending step as you go down, you will reach a deeper, healthier, more relaxed state of mind, going deeper and deeper, down one step. Feeling more relaxed, more alert, more comfortable. Step number two, going deeper and deeper into a deeper state of mind where you have access to all information, all reality. Step three, step four, Deeper and deeper. Step five, more comfortable, more relaxed, more aware of your inner environment. Five and six, seven, step eight. Step nine, as you step down the 10th step, you are at a very deep, very relaxed, very alert, very aware state of mind. Your guide is with you. You may create any other beings that you would like to have with you in the theater. Look around briefly and find the best seat in the house. That is your seat. Move to the best seat in the house and make yourself very comfortable. The house lights are dimming. An image begins to show up on the screen. The first scene that you will view is a scene from your own life one year from now. A scene that will be meaningful to you, significant. This is your creation. You are using your imagination. If there is anything in the scene that you would like to adjust or recreate, do it any way that you would like for it to be. Take a moment now, look at your life, your personal life, one year from today.
Create it the way you would like for it to be. Your guide is with you. You may ask your guide any question you would like about the scene you see from one year from today. You are able to know the future. The future exists in the now. You may create the future any way you would like for it to be. You choose to create it by consulting with your guide. Give thanks for what you have seen and take a deep breath. You remain deeply relaxed, very comfortable. The next scene appearing on your screen is from your personal life, five years from today. Five years from today. Consult with your guide if there's anything you would like to change or recreate. It's your creation. Once again, the scene is going to change. Take a deep breath. Feel your seat around you. Be very comfortable. Look around the theater. Be aware of your inner senses. As you take another deep breath, the scene will change to your personal life 25 years from today. It's your creation. This is your imagination. Create it to be what you would like for it to be. Ask your guide what would be most beneficial for you and for others. And feel free to create that. You are very deeply relaxed, very alert. 
very aware of your inner senses and the information that you can perceive. Now, as you take another deep breath, the scene will again change to your personal life 100 years from today. Let it unfold. Be aware of what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you sense, what you know. 100 years from today. If you have any questions, ask your guide. And finally, as you take one more deep breath, the scene will change once again. It will be your personal life 1,000 years from today. Take that deep breath. Relax yourself. Be aware of your inner senses, how you perceive information. Very comfortable, very relaxed, very alert, very aware of all of your inner senses. Now in your created theater, it is time for refreshment. The house lights will come up gently. Find your way to the lobby. Find your favorite refreshment. They speak with the entities that are in the lobby, the ones that you created, angelic, masters, teachers, Enjoy your refreshment. Enjoy being in the presence of such beautiful beings. They do not see you as being any different from themselves. You are a beautiful being of light. Now the house lights are indicating it is time to return to the theater for the second half of our presentation. Find the best seat in the house. Make yourself comfortable.
the house lights will dim. Decide what you would like to have information about here. You may look at the future of the world or the future of your community or the future of your, your location, the future of the solar system, the future of anything that you would like here. Decide what it is you would like to explore. As the house lights go down, the first scene appears on the screen in front of you. One year from today, see what it is that is manifesting in your imagination. And once again, if it is not exactly the way that you would like it, you may recreate it any way that you choose. One year from today, Take advantage of your guide if you need explanations or have questions. As you take a deep breath now, the scene will change once again. You will be seeing what is taking place, what you should know about five years from today. Deep breath, deeply relaxed, alert, aware, perceiving what is, a, what is of benefit for you to perceive. Give thanks for the information you have received. Take another deep breath. The scene will change to 25 years from today. 25 years from today. Information that would be useful for you to know. Your inner senses are very aware, very alert. Sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, knowing, sensing. Give thanks for what you have seen. Take one more deep breath. And the scene will shift to 100 years from today. Useful information for you to know about. Useful awareness for you to have. 100 years from today.
very relaxed, sitting in the best seat in the house, looking at this magnificent screen. Take a deep breath. Allow the scene to shift. You will be perceiving information from 1,000 years from today. All beneficial information that you have received, however you receive it, telepathically, visually, audibly, whatever your method is, you will retain and remember when this exercise is over. Give thanks to your guide Give thanks to the scene. The house lights are going to come up slowly now. And you may rise from your seat and return to the lobby, bringing with you a wealth of information that will benefit you and benefit those you love. In the lobby, give thanks to those who are there. Embrace any or all. You may return to this theater at any time that you desire, just by remembering it. Sitting down, closing your eyes, remembering the theater, and obtain any information about any time, past or future, that you desire. Move to the door that you came in a while ago. <coughs> Greet the doorman. Give the doorman your thanks. Move out front, look at your theater again. How has it changed? How is it different than it was when you arrived here? Locate your flower. Give thanks to your flower for being with you. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three. On the count of three, you will, will return to the outer conscious level, being wide awake, alert, aware, relaxed, and comfortable. One, coming up slowly now, returning to the outer conscious level. Two, alert, awake, relaxed. Three, Eyes open, wide awake, alert, feeling as if you had had eight hours of refreshing, comfortable sleep. Mm.